In this video, I'm going to show you how to dynamically populate a drop-down list in a SharePoint Framework Web Park property pane. This is a common task, and I see this question pop up a bunch with my students and in public forums. I figured this is a great topic for a little demo. Hey, I'm Andrew, and if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all my videos for developers about Microsoft 365, Microsoft Azure, and the SharePoint Framework, which is what I'm tackling today. All right, let's get down to business. You got this web part and it's got some public property that you wanna let authorized users change it to a predefined value that you set. For instance, let's say that you wanna show data from a SharePoint list uh, on your web part. So you create some public property that's gonna store the selected list that you want the users to be able to show data for. So users with the necessary permissions to edit the web part should be able to select from the existing SharePoint list on the current site using the property pane. Or maybe you wanna show some data from some external source and let the user pick from a dynamic list of different options. Ideally, this list is dynamically populated when the web parts property pane is activated, but this can get a little tricky. Why? Well, the method that you override on a web parts base class to tell it how you want the web part property pane to be displayed that's the method get property pane configuration. It doesn't return a promise or is set up to be asynchronous. So when you go fetch data from an API, which is always gonna be an asynchronous call, you can run into the case where your property pane doesn't render because the method didn't return the property pane's configuration fast enough for the SharePoint framework to render it out. So the way that you can address this is by preloading the dropdown options before the user has a chance to activate the property pane. Let me show you how you can do this. In this scenario, I want to let the user pick a list from the current SharePoint site using a dropdown selector in the web parts property pane. Now I've already created a web part project with the SharePoint framework 1.15.2 Yeoman generator and I've modified it to have a single public property that's going to display the currently selected list. Now to keep it simple for this demo, I'm only going to store the list name. And for now, my property pane is just using a hard-coded set of items. So the first step is to get the SharePoint list using the SharePoint REST API. So the first thing we'll do is come over to our web part and we need to update our import statements to get the things that we need to be able to make a call to the SharePoint REST API using the SPFX uh, API. So I'm gonna say add an import statement and I'm gonna import from app Microsoft SP HTTP, and the two properties I'm looking for are the SPHP client and the SPHP client response and save my changes. Okay, now let's go create a method where we're gonna go get that data. So I'm gonna create a new private method called, it's gonna be an asynchronous method called underscore get site lists. And it's gonna be, it's gonna return a promise of an array of strings. All right, so the first thing we need to do is create the endpoint where we're gonna make the request to the SharePoint REST API. So I'll create an endpoint. And this endpoint, we're gonna start with uh, the URL to the current site. So that's this. We can get that from this.context.pagecontext.web.absoluteurl. That's gonna give us the root URL of the request we wanna make. And then the rest endpoint is always gonna be on the underscore API slash web slash lists. And then I'm just gonna paste in, let's turn on word wrapping so you can read this easier. I'm gonna pass in the query. So I'm gonna grab just the title property and then I'm gonna filter to show me only the visible list. I'm gonna set the, the, the filter to be hidden uh, is equal to false. So they'll just show me the visible ones. I'm gonna sort by the title property and I'm only gonna get the top 10. So the idea here is I only wanna get a couple items to show you in this, in this list. I don't wanna have a gigantic dropdown list. Um, the next thing we have to do is actually go make the call. So I'm gonna do that by saying const raw response, which is gonna be an SP, SP HTTP client response object. And I'm gonna say await this context.sphp client, use the get method. I'm gonna pass in the endpoint and the uh, con the V1 configuration, right? So that now that's gonna issue our call. Now that I have my data that's come back to me, I know that it's gonna give me a JSON or, um, object that comes back, but that JSON object is gonna have a value property on it that's really an array of all the items that came back. Well, I know that that's only gonna have a title uh, property on it, 
So I can I can do a little bit of stuff that's going to make my life easier to kind of configure this to just say let's convert all those all those arrays of of objects that have a title property. Let's just convert it to an array of strings uh, where those strings are just the title properties. So I'm going to say return um, await the raw response dot json. And I, again, I know that there's going to be a value property on that response that comes back because that's what every array is going to be coming back from the list endpoint. And I'm going to map that array. I'm going to run using the, the arrays map function. And I'm going to say that what we get back is I know it's going to be a list and it's going to be an object that comes back. And because I said I only wanted the title property in my select statement, then I'm just going to say we want a title, which is going to be a type string that comes back. And I'm going to pass that into this return statement, which is going to return back just the list title property. Now let's see this actually work. So what I'm going to do is come up here to my on init and let's just change the on init since we're going to, this is where we're going to work later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this so that whenever the web part loads, it's going to go fetch that data and, um, and display it uh, in the console. So I'll change this to an async method. Uh, it's already async recipe zero our promise, but by using the async method, I can use the await keyword or the by adding the async keyword, I can use the await keyword later, which will just keep my code a little bit cleaner. So what I'll do is I'll say console.log just to show that we're in the init method. And then I'll say const get my list that we that we're getting back from our get site uh, list. So await get site lists. And then I'll just write out those lists that we get back. Like that. Cool. So let's see if this worked. So I'm going to come back over here to my browser and let's open up the JavaScript console and I will clear this out and let's go ahead and let's refresh our page. And sure enough, we can see the init methods coming is is being registered and we can see we have our list of lists that we're getting back. Um, and that list is just an array of strings. So that's exactly what we want. All right, let's refactor this a bit and let's store this array of SharePoint list titles to a class scoped member that we can use later. So what I'm going to do is come up and add in a new class scope member. So to say private um, underscore site list is going to be an array of strings. And then instead of storing them in this list right here, I'm simply going to say this underscore site list, and I can get rid of these console statements because we don't need those anymore. At this point, the asynchronous call is now out of the way so that now that we have an array of SharePoint list titles in our site, we can now update the dropdown list selector for the property pane. And we can do this without having to worry about the asynchronous stuff because that's all out of the way so that now when they open up the property pane configuration, it's going to have all the data it needs to build up all those dropdown lists. All right, so now while this next step isn't really necessary, I'm going to do it just for completeness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a new import statement to my property pane selector called the I property pane drop down option. Um, that's just going to give me a little bit more IntelliSense, make it easier when I'm coding this up. So I'm going to scroll down here back to my where I'm actually creating my property pane configuration, and I'm going to use my property pane drop down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change out these options to where I don't want to list, give it back that array. Instead, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to say this underscore site list. I need to convert this to a collection of objects that the drop down, um, the property pane drop down object understands. So what it's expecting here with these lists, we're going to map over all of these. We're going to convert this array to something else. So each one is going to be a list, which is uh, or a list name, which is really just a string. And what this is going to do is I want to return back for each one of these an object of type I property pane configuration option like that. And that's expecting a couple different things. Now, in my case here, all I really care about is the key, which is going to be the list name and the text that's going to show up, which again, we're only going to be using the list names in this demo here. So that's going to store both of those. So now I should be in a lot better shape. So let's go back over to our web part. I can go ahead and close the console. If I refresh the page, I come back over here and go into edit mode for my web part. 
I should see a list of all the available lists that we were fetching. And now it's showing up and you can see as I change them, the values changing under under the uh, the name here that you see. So you see the site assets here and we can see site pages are showing up uh, right here as well. Pretty simple, right? Now, what I've done is I've stuffed a link to the in the description below where you can download this project if you want to see it working uh, in your own environment. What did you think about this quick tip on the SharePoint framework? Do you have simple things that seemingly trip you up with the SharePoint framework? Let me know by dropping a comment below. I might use that as a subject for a future tutorial on this channel. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe by smashing that big red subscribe button below the video so that you'll see when I publish more videos for professional developers on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure, including topics on the SharePoint framework.